In this video you will learn how to implement such data structure inside JavaScript, which is called queue. Inside plain JavaScript we don't get queue out of the box, but this is something that you might want to use in your application, or you might get such question really often in the interview when they are asking you about data structures. So what is queue? This is just a list of the elements with the rule first in, first out, which actually means we are adding an element to the list, then one more element, and one more element, and the first element that we are taking from the list is the first that we pushed there. This is exactly why it is called queue. It works just like normal queue in the real world. But here is a huge problem. Almost all people, when they are getting a question to build a queue on the interview, are doing it wrong. And then they don't pass an interview. What is the problem here? If you never implemented a queue, you typically want to use for that an array. Because it sounds logical, we have just an array of items, we are pushing the items inside, and then we are using unshift to remove the item from the array. But the main problem is here that on interview, lots of people are building queue wrong. They are using array for that because it sounds really simple. And the main problem is that such implementation is bad on the performance. Let's first implement the bad variant and then refactor it to a good one. So here I want to create a class and let's name it badq. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have a membership here on the channel that you can join to support me. It will give you access to the new videos earlier, emojis and priority replies to your comments. Typically you want just to name it Q, but here I want to highlight that this is a bad implementation. What we want to do here is create just an array of items, which is a list, and then we have two methods, NQ and DQ, which means push to the array and remove from the array. So here we are implementing NQ, and we are getting an element, which can be anything, and we simply want to push this element inside our items. So here these items push, and we are providing an element inside. Now we are implementing our DQ. We don't need to provide anything and we want to get here an element which was pushed as a first element and return it. Which actually here we can use this.items.shift. And as you can see what shift does, it removes the first element from the array and returns it. This is exactly what we want and it really sounds like a good approach. The main problem is exactly in this function. Why it is the problem? Because it makes the time complexity of our class not constant. Which means if our array is super big, then the shift function will take a lot of time to be executed. Which means our complexity is not constant, it is linear. So just for you to remember, this is exactly why this approach is bad. Now we need to implement several more methods. First of all, we need here is empty method and additionally size method. How we can get size? We can simply return this item's length. And inside is empty, we can use method this.size and check if it equals zero. And the last method that we want to implement is called pick. It will just show for us what the next element will be pushed out of the array. This is why here we can return this item zero. This is how typically people are implementing Q on the interview. Now let's check how it works. We are getting here bad Q, which is an instance of our bad Q. Now here we can use bad Q with NQ, and we are providing our elements inside. For example, here we have ID1 and name foo. Then let's copy it and change to ID2 and ID3, and let's name it bar and bus. After this, let's console log our bad queue dot size. So we know how big it is. And also I want to check here is empty. And after this, I want to call bad queue dot the queue. So we remove a single element and we can save it to first element. And here I want to console log first of all first element and then our bad queue dot items. Let's check in browser what we are getting. As you can see here, we are getting three after our NQ. This is totally correct. We push three elements to our array. Is empty is false. This is also correct. And here is the first element that we are getting from our queue because this is the first element that we pushed. And inside our array, we are getting just two elements which are left here for our queue. 
And actually the whole implementation is good, but this DQ method is not acceptable because it makes the complexity much higher. This is why this is a wrong approach, especially for the interview. Now let's update this code to our good queue, where we will implement it correctly. I will name the class good queue, and instead of an array, we will store now an object, which actually means we don't have indexes at all, we must solve it differently. The main point is that here we will have just key and value. So what is our NQ? We are getting inside an element, but here additionally to our items I want two properties. I want to have here tail, which will be zero, and head, which also be zero. So we are using tail and head as two pointers, which are at the beginning of the queue and at the end of the queue, and we are using them to know how many elements we have, where we are, and what element to remove. This is why here we must change our NQ, and what we want instead of push, we want to write here these items, and here is this tail, which means this is the last index that we have, equal element. So if we have zero elements, then here we will have zero, and the value will be our element. And after this we want to increase tail, so here is tail++. plus plus. When we are doing the Q, what we want to do first, we want to remove this element. This is why I delete these items, and here we are providing this dot head. Why head? Because we are removing the first element and not the last one. And after this, we want to increase our this head with plus plus. In this case, every single time we are moving our head to our tail. But here is the problem, we remove the item, but in our DQ we also must return it. This is why let's save it to the constant. So here we have our item, and this is our these items this head, so we are saving it before, then we removed it, and at the end I want to return this item. Now let's talk about size function, we don't have length anymore, but what we have is our head and tail, and we can simply write here this tail minus this head, and this is the length of our array. Our isEmpty function stays the same, because this is just a usage of size, but we must change our peak function. In this case here we will use these items and here this head. It will show for us the first element. This is an amazing implementation of Q class just because our DQ has a constant size complexity and it is not increasing with the amount of data. Now here let's change everywhere bad Q to good Q and check in browser if it's working. So I updated everywhere bad Q to good Q and we are doing exactly the same stuff. Let's look in browser. We are getting three, which are three elements that we pushed. We are getting here false because it is not empty. And we are getting here the first element that we are getting out of our queue. And this is ID1 and name foo. This is totally correct. And as you can see here, after the queue, we are getting just two elements. And here we have our object with keys one and two and these values. And actually, if you're interested to know what is ECMAScript 6 map inside Angular and how it differs from the plain object, make sure to check this video also.